rate my cut, bro. Rate my cut. Check it out. Check it out. How do I look? How do I <laughs> Today, <laughs> I'm going to be doing this. Well, technically, it's not the nighttime. It's like outside, still daylight, but I just shut every window. And I'm going to be doing something a little, a little spooky, you could say. Now, I'm basically, I've been playing Roblox for the better part of half a decade now. Or actually, no, I've been playing even more. And I've been, I've, I've, I've seen some stuff, you know. I've, I've seen some pretty wild stuff on there. However, nothing compares to what I've seen today. Actually, you know, I've, I, never mind. Forget, forget all I said, alright. Th- let's just put it this way. This game, it's interesting. So, the game I'm looking at today, or I played rather, is called Double R Bar. And it's, it's, it's a pretty cozy game, you know. They've got, it, it's just, it's got a nice ambience to it. It's just a cozy, you know, nothing spooky going on under the surface. It's it's a completely chill game. But as you can see, the the main gist with this game and what makes it a creepy game is that the the NPCs look at you. Yeah, that's about it. That's that's the video, guys. <laughs> just looking at me. Hey. What you staring at? Huh? You got a staring problem, buddy? What you looking at, huh? What you looking at, sweet cheeks? You want Yeah, snuck a kiss. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Now that in and of itself isn't that creepy. The only reason, in fact, this game became a creepy passed away back in like 2015, 16. I'm gonna put up some footage. Shout out to this guy. He has like the very first like like recorded documentation of this game back in the day and what its former state was. It was just creepy. Nowadays, this game is has had a complete rehaul, which I'm going to talk about. Or actually, I'll just say it now. It got rehauled midway through 2020. But before that, before before it was rehauled, it, it looked completely different. And it was pretty spooky because you didn't have 10 to 20 players playing at a time like you do now. It was, it was pretty eerie. And the fact that the NPCs looked at you funny, or looked at you, sorry, that just made it even more creepy. I'm going I'm to admit, I kind of feel bad for the developer of this game. He probably just put that feature in because he thought, oh, shoot, look, the NPCs are moving and stuff, and they look at the they look at the, the player. That's pretty nice, and I think I'll add that into my game. And little did he know, it became a goddamn like a Roblox myth. Now, today is going to be like a theory type of thing that I've got going on here. It's basically... There's this little padlock door at the basement of this entire bar, and there, there's this whole story going on with the two bar owners, Randy and I, I believe his name is Ro- Rorans. I I'm not really good with names in general, but anyways, there's these two guys, right? And they've they've got some shady businesses going on. This bar is supposed to like take place in like it's so supposed to be like a cold war themed but not a cold war themed bar a bar that takes place in like the 1950s 60s it's 1950s 60s themed if you know what i'm saying it's got that little like that vibe to it that old school vibe however as far as i can tell according to the lore this thing this currently lore wise it takes place in, in like 19 90 something anyways there's tons of other secrets in this game and things like that but i'm just gonna speed run how to get into like the secret bunker area because i think that's anyone else who isn't subscribed to me who views my, this video is probably gonna know that want to know that so what you do is is there's this little hatch behind the stage with a lever pull the lever right and then you can go down and see the padlock's door to get the to get the password, it's pretty simple. If you go back up top near the bar, there is a got some poker cards or just cards, and they're sort of laid out beside like this this guy holding a beer bottle. Get those cards. Basically, you look at those, and that's how you find out what the the keypad is, the code on it. And once you open that up, you'll be led to a little bunker, and it's it's got some pretty interesting notes in there. Let's say I'm I'm gonna. Real quick, before I spoil you any of the story details, if you want to keep exploring, there's a picture on the wall of a certain character that, well, let's just say it gets kind of complicated. It's really hard to explain, but you go through that picture, and there is a door. Uh, Now, in this build I'm playing... I had to breach through the wall. Okay, don't 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 ban me, Roblox. Okay, I did this. I did this for the journalists. Okay, I did this. I was doing it. My, my journalistic duty was to breach through this wall using an exploit, okay? What can I say? So I did that, 
and nothing really happens with the door. It's, I think it's supposed to be a teleportation prompt, but it's not active yet, so it's just a door right now. But yeah, going back to that bunker room, something very interesting is there. There's three notes, and there still is, as far as I can tell, three notes in... Yeah, I just, I just opened them up right now, in that little area, and this current build. Now, it is assumed that the person who is writing these notes is, um, Rorian? Ro I, the guy who operates the shady bar at the bottom, okay, that guy. He's writing these. June 17th, 1964, Dad told us that we are running the bar now. Me and Randy are having mixed ideas on what we could call it. On another note, this shelter dad made is quite drafty. I'll probably end up staying here some nights. It's quite nice for what it is. Of course, I can't forget what's going on in the current world, but hey, might as well have some fun while everyone's going crazy. These times have changed and fears grown. This this is a very simple one, right? This is the founding of the bar. This is how the two brothers, the fellas, the Super Mario... No, I'm not going to go there with that. I'm not going to go with that. This is how they got a hold of the bar. And the times he's talking about is, of course, the Cold War. And also explains why there's a bunker in a goddamn bar, because the homemade bunkers or personal bunkers were standard in those times because of the, you know, the red fear and basically having a country drop all of their nukes on you. That, that could be a pretty scary sight, let me just say. We then have a time skip. We go all the way from 1964 to 1976, April 14th. And this is all Randy again. Not Randy. Roran. This is all him. Trying to get this damn radio working. Of course, being multiple feet underground probably doesn't help out with getting signal, but in these times, hiding is all I can really do. Competition is barren these days, with only places like Freddy's even getting customers. Of course, business is booming with my ruthless tactics. With the police behind my back, I don't think anything is ever going to change. So this is uh, in reference to sort of the shady, like, business dealings that he's got going on. If you notice throughout that little walkthrough I did, there were some very interesting things in there. For one, there were multiple guns present in the bar. And that in itself is, okay, it's America, you know, you can have, you have a right to bear arms. But on the Randy's bar, there's a little, like, board called Wall of Fame with knives through it. This is, uh, um, people are speculating, right? This isn't, this is a theory, but... They believe that Randy's line of work is sort of just assassination. They think it's there. There's there's a possibility that this line of work he is talking about is assassination. Like he he's a hitman sort of thing, or a former hitman rather. And I'll get that. That's in the that's coming up in the next note. As for the radio, there's a radio on the top shelf in this little bunker here. There's also two other radios that I know of. One is at the top of the roof of the bar. And one's in the little tram car that I, I haven't shown yet, but it's, it's, if you go on this game, I'll leave a description, I'm, a description, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm screwed up right now. A link in the description, you can just check out the game for yourself. Now, as to the point of how he got the cops to work with him, an, a, a hitman, of all things, not a, not a drug dealer that can hook you up, a hitman. I don't know about that one. That's just going to have to come with more lore reveals. We, we got new Roblox ro lore, boys. Come on. Another weird thing about these notes is we have very long time skips. Like this next note, 1997. That's like 20, 21 years? Can I do math? Per no, no, I cannot. But I have 21 years from the last note. So there's got to be more notes hidden somewhere. There can't there, sh there can't be a 21 year time skip if he's writing notes. Anyways, December the 15th, 1997, Randy brought a kid to the bar. Of course, with his big heart, he's letting the kid stay here as a home and I said no to the bunker because I don't need a kid getting into my affairs or accidentally shooting themselves. Okay. Randy says their name is Mulberries, which I'll get to why that's weird as he says in a second. What a weird name for a kid. Randy just calls him Mill, from what I can tell. Business, booming as usual, but I'm getting older, and it seems like I ain't gonna be able to smooth relations with business. Now, basically what happens here is the... <laughs> the, the creator of the game, Millberries, right, inserts himself into the lore. This is, this is tough, because now I just don't know what the... Like, what's going on, okay? But he is now effectively a part of the lore. And this final line, this this final line really confuses me when he says, I ain't gonna be able to smooth relations with business. That that kind of just sounds like broken English to me. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Like, is he talking about smoothing over relations with 
former partners, things like things like that. I mean, if he's a hitman, I'd assume maybe he has some loose ends to tie up. Maybe he's talking about that, but then again, I can only leave this up to interpretation since there's no solid evidence go going for this. Now, honestly, I have to be, I have to come up front, okay? I, I gotta be honest here. I wasn't really into this game for the sort of lore they got going on. Honestly, I just want to figure out what's behind that door. All right. Now they have a new door. All right. We got we got a new door. They they opened up the actual like area now, so I didn't have to wall breach for this one. It's open now. It's a new door, but it's it still doesn't do anything. And I want to know what's behind that door. Okay. As bad as everyone else does. It looks like to me. What Rorian or Randy, the both of them seem to be conspiring together on this. And as to what they have in that bunker, it's probably just, honestly, stuff related to his line of work, which is that assassination stuff. Although, I would not be surprised if it's some completely, like, out, out there thing that I was not expecting at all. You see, the thing about the Roblox Smith community is that these guys collaborate together to make some of the, some some interesting some interesting games, let's just put it that way. So I would not be surprised if whatever's behind that door connects to another part of the Roblox mythos and is just something completely wild. I mean, we already have the creator of the game inserting himself into the lore of the game. So I would not be surprised if something like Bigfoot becomes an essential part of the lore. Look, man, <laughs> Roblox Obama bike was one thing, but this this is about to be we're talking we're talking about I don't I don't know what this could be Donald Trump tricycle. This don't look that up. But this this is going to be different. Now I know this wasn't the conclusion you were looking for, but I can only really speculate at this point. However, that's not the end of this little uh, little case study I'm doing. I'm going to be putting out some more videos and I'm going to be keeping track with this game as the updates come along. It's also, it's been weird because 20, midway through 2020, this game that looked like this, like just completely pretty barren, just a bunch of JPEG images on the wall really, turned into this, in, just out of nowhere randomly. And then the creator, who hadn't been active for the better part of half a decade, finally comes up and is like, alright, I'm ready to roll. So something big is coming, alright, and I'm going to stick to stick to covering this game. Because I'm, I'm interested, let me just say. But that's the end of the video, guys. It's, it's looking like it's going to be a long one. It's going to be a late one, but I hope you enjoyed. And anyways, I ain't got no catchphrase.